Hello there, it's Joe the CRM chap here uh, with a brand new video in my series all about Microsoft Exam PL600. This is the Solution Architect Exam uh, for those who are working with the Power Platform and are building out or architecturing solutions across different applications such as Power Apps, Power Automate, Power Virtual Agents and Power BI and Microsoft Dataverse. So in today's video we're going to be looking at a potential approach that we can follow when we're wanting to model out our data that we're going to be storing or using within the Power Platform. Now, one of the major benefits of using a solution like the Power Platform is that we can very quickly and easily just go in and actually start building out a particular sort of a um, you know table or data model that we want. So I can just go in here, I can create a new solution, I can maybe, um, and this is not recommended from an ALM standpoint, I can maybe go in into my different list of tables, create a brand new table, uh, add on additional columns and very quickly and easily build out uh, the elements that I want for my particular data model. So the question then sort of emerges, okay, well, why do we want to go through the process of actually modeling, that, uh, modeling this out first? Well, there's a few good reasons. I think obviously for documentation point of view, it's always really useful to be able to have that listed down in terms of, okay, here's what we've actually built out. And by having an appropriate diagram, we can very quickly and easily include that as part of any documentation that we write in the future. Certainly being able to get a at a glance view of how a particular data model looks at any point again is incredibly valuable, particularly when we're speaking with stakeholders or others in the organization. You know, and really this uh, and as a final thing as well, we want to ensure that we are, you know, planning for success when we're building out the solution. You know, so although it's we can sort of go in and incrementally build things out by maybe just taking some time to think very carefully about how our data model is going to be looking. Uh, and then just building out an example of how that looks so we can maybe get the our internal stakeholders to review and approve it, approve it. Then we can maybe avoid any situation where we're having to go back and redo work constantly. So one of the tools that I would recommend that we use, and again, this is just an approach that you can adopt. There are potentially others, uh, and I'd be interested as well to hear maybe in the comments uh, any recommendations that you have around this. One of the things that I do very regularly is build out what we call these crow's foot notation diagrams using Microsoft Visio. Um, so, provided that you've got the appropriate Microsoft Visio uh, sort of license installed on your machine, you can very quickly and easily start to build these out just by uh, creating a brand new Visio document. We then navigate down through our various different sort of diagrams down here, and we should be able to see that if we do a bit of a search, that we've got a crow's foot um, diagram that we can uh, select on here. So, crow's foot database notation. So, let's go about and just create this document now uh, within Visio. Um, so what we get on here, as of any Visio type template document, is on the left-hand side the list of different shapes that we can drag in. Um, for this particular document, I'll just maybe just adjust the uh, the orientation of this so we get to view things on a landscape view instead. And the core component of our Crow's Foot database notation is our entity objects. Now these are in effect our tables, or in older times, um, under the old sort of terminology, if you've been around Dataverse for a few uh, for a few years, this would actually be what we would call our tables, they were previously known as entities. Um, so effectively, we can use these to represent the various different objects that our business may be wanting to sort of record. Now, there'll be two different types of entities that we potentially look to consume. There'll be our system ones, so things like, for example, um, our tables from our common data model uh, table sets, so things like our account, our contact, our lead, etc. There'll also be our custom ones as well. And really, um, in terms of when I'm building out these type of diagrams, what I like to do is to be able to uh, include everything that we're going to be using and the key uh, the key thing with that is that we don't want to be adding in every single common data model table particularly maybe uh, tables or columns that we're not using so as an example maybe if we are certain in our solution that we want to use our account table we can add it in like so what's quite nice about this is that we can go in and then label out the various different attributes that we're going to be using so it could be for my particular solution if i navigate through back into my account table it could be that I'm only using a few different attributes within this as part of my solution. Um, so I can just uh, navigate into Dataverse very easily uh, and I can see a list of everything, all the different columns that we're going to be using. So the account name will likely be a, be a column that we want to use. In this particular case, uh, because I've um, got my sort of more technical focus head on, uh, I'm using the logical names of the tables. It might be maybe for, uh, if you're going to be presenting this document, that you might choose to maybe, for example, maybe just have the display name instead, or you can maybe have both. Uh, for the purpose of this example, I'm just going to continue using the logical names. 
And in this case, maybe for our particular solution, we're using the account name, uh, we're using the account number. Uh, I can go in and maybe add on additional columns just by right clicking and I can say I can add on additional attributes. So maybe there's one more attribute that we're using. So maybe for example, our address one composite. And I'll just continue to do this like so. I can maybe add in additional columns that I want to create as part of my solution. So it could be perhaps maybe I want to have in a column that's maybe recording the uh, the turnover for this particular account. Uh, so maybe uh, as part of this, I want to ensure that I specify whatever prefix that I plan to use for my customizations. So it could be maybe in this case, I use my initials and then maybe just have a figure here for turnover. Now we can take this um, a bit further as well, just by if we right click the the diagram like so, we can we should have an option here to be able to um, uh, show or, 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 or illustrate the different sort of um, uh, attribute types that we're going to be configuring out. So by right clicking at the very top like so we can see we've got an option there for show attribute types. What's quite useful about this is that we can actually um, make reference to the underlying data types that these columns are if we're going to be using them. So again it becomes really clear when we're actually going in and modeling this out in the system what we need to create. Uh, and in this case at the moment it's using the, the underlying SQL server sort of data types. It could be maybe that we just sort of change this to maybe uh, something that's a bit more easy to read. Maybe just call it our primary key. In this case, I'll just call this maybe my uh, my GUID field. For my name, uh, it's going to be maybe a string. Uh, again, account number, again, will be string. Uh, uh, go through each of these like so. And then for turnover, this will probably be a currency. So I'll just type that in like so, or maybe just call this maybe the SQL Server data type, which will be the money. Again, it's really just up to us in terms of how we do it, but what's quite nice about this is that we can um, very clearly indicate you know, what's going to be created. So if it is the case that we are passing maybe this diagram as the solution architect to uh, somebody else in the team to be able to build out, uh, then there's no ambiguity there. We know very clearly what needs to be built out and there's going to be no um, you know, potential mistakes made as a consequence. What we can also do is that if we maybe, for, for example, decide that our turnover column needs to be mandatory, it needs to be created each time, or provided each time when we create or work with our account record. Again, we can just right click the particular um, particular column on over here, set as required, and then the bold text there will indicate, okay, well, we need to make sure that we set the business requirement for that accordingly. From here, we then maybe start to build out the various different sort of uh, objects that we want to consume as part of this. So perhaps as an example, I wanna maybe drag in an additional custom table type that we're gonna be building out. So let's maybe assume as part of our solution that maybe we are wanting to send out maybe WhatsApp messages to our accounts. So maybe we need to have a custom activity table created to be able to record that. So I'm just going to call this maybe my WhatsApp messages like so. Because this will be a custom uh, 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 table or entity, I'm still making that mistake even after uh, a year and a half, um, we will need to ensure that we provide on our custom prefix and other relevant details as well. So in this case, maybe we want to call this our WhatsApp uh, ID. And then we just uh, start to decorate this with the various different properties that we potentially want to record as part of this. So maybe it could be, you know, uh, the title of the message. Uh, we could have, uh, again, maybe the, uh, the message itself. Now, because we want to also relate the WhatsApp messages to our particular accounts, uh, we want to add on an attribute to sort of record that. Uh, in this case, we then want to have this as a lookup. So I'm just going to maybe call this maybe my account ID as an example. It'll probably be um, um, maybe a regarding field instead of this activity. So actually, let's just record that our regarding instead. And in this case, maybe I can then define this as a as a foreign key to, to clearly indicate that it's a lookup to another table type. And on the left hand side over here, what I can see that I can drag in is a relationship. And this will allow me to then sort of map together my various different sort of objects. So what I can do is then set it so that the uh, I've got my one account up here indicated by the appropriate lines. So the begin symbol will be my uh, sort of one or more. And then for my many down here, this will be my WhatsApp messages. And I can just drag it onto there like so, adjust that. And then I can see I've then got the relationship very clearly sort of indicated on the diagram. So iteratively, as we start to continue to build this out, we can get a really good indication and flavor in terms of how our overall data model sort of looks. Um, potentially, if we're working with quite a large 
system or potentially quite a lot of objects that are modeling out trying to put it all onto one sort of view can be quite sort of difficult so it might be recommended that maybe okay for our maybe this is the b2b portion of our solution maybe we just um have a very focused um per page view of each element of our solution so again we can then just sort of iteratively build out each sort of object and again only including the elements that we are actually going to be consuming within our particular solution uh, don't be necessarily concerning ourselves with maybe attributes or column types uh, that we're not going to be consuming from Dataverse. And we can also use this as well for maybe modeling out any data source that we're not going to be building out in Dataverse. So maybe we've got some existing SQL Server tables. We've got maybe some Salesforce objects that we're consuming. Again, the same approach can be used to very clearly uh, indicate what we're going to be doing and how we're going to be modeling this out uh, within, within our Power Platform solution. So that wraps it up for uh, this particular video. So I hope this has been useful in showing you a potential way you can go about and model out your overall sort of data model uh, within the Power Platform. Um, if you've not checked out the other videos in the series so far, then please do. Uh, we've got this and other topics that we're covering as part of this alongside the appropriate blog series. Um, please do give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the content. And I'll see you next time. Thanks again. Cheers. Bye.